Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, two Russian uh, men suspected of carrying out the Salisbury nerve agent poisonings uh, three years ago are being linked to an explosion at an arms depot in the Czech Republic in 2014. The BBC has learnt details of a trail of evidence linking the men to the blast and a unit of the Russian military intelligence. Prague is now expelling 18 Russian diplomats. Our security correspondent, Gordon Carrera, has been following the investigation the aftermath of a deadly explosion. In October 2014, this arms depot in the Czech countryside blew up. It took a month to find the remains of two men who worked there. It was widely assumed to have been an accident, until now. A key piece of evidence came when investigators found an email requesting permission for two men to inspect the site. Attached were scans of the men's passports, a copy of which the BBC has obtained. If you recognise them, this is why. They're the same two men wanted in connection with the Salisbury poisoning in the UK. In 2018, they were spotted on CCTV and accused of smearing nerve agent on the front door of Sergei Skripal's house. The two denied any involvement, saying they visited Salisbury to see the cathedral spire. The email with the passport scans claimed the men were from the National Guard of Tajikistan and gave false names. The pair arrived in Prague on October 11th using the same names as in Salisbury. On October 13th they went to stay on Ostrava near the arms depot and they left the country on October 16th, the day of the explosion. But why was the depot targeted? The BBC has been told that a Bulgarian arms dealer, Emilian Gebrev, stored weapons there. Six months later in Bulgaria, another team from Russian military intelligence is believed to have tried to kill Gebrev. This CCTV shows an alleged member of the team moving around Gebrev's car. Its alleged poison was smeared on its door handle, leaving him fighting for his life, though he did survive. One expert says these incidents paint a picture of how this team operates. It actually seems to be military intelligence's kind of in-house team of miscellaneous throat slitters and general saboteurs. It's probably about 20 operational staff and maybe 200 support personnel. The Czech Prime Minister last night announced 18 Russian diplomats were to be expelled. Moscow has responded that the allegations are absurd. The revelations about this explosion may not be the last. Investigations into the activities of Russian military intelligence are ongoing and more cases may still be uncovered. Gordon Carrera, BBC News. The two Russian men suspected of carrying out the Salisbury poisonings have now been linked to an explosion at an arms depot in the Czech Republic in 2014. The Czech Organised Crime Unit published photographs as two foreign citizens who were using Russian passports. They were identified as Alexander Petrov and Ruslan Boshirov. They were suspected of being behind the Novichok poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia in 2018. Mark McQuillan reports. These two men will be familiar to many, suspected of carrying out the Salisbury poisonings, which led to a major investigation in the city in 2018. They are now being linked to a separate attack in the Czech Republic. Authorities there are hunting the pair in relation to an explosion at an arms depot in 2014, which killed two people. At the time, it was thought to have been an accident, but after an exhaustive investigation, they are laying the blame at Russia after what they've described as unequivocal evidence. The Czechs decided to call out Moscow because they had had enough, according to this analyst. The Russian political war against the West has flared out once more. Mark Galliotti believes the explosive device in this case may have gone off prematurely, and this could well have been about a separate dispute. This was in 2014, at a time when basically Russia and Ukraine were at undeclared war over the southeastern Donbass region. And there are also a series of unexplained explosions of Ukrainian arms depots. So it seems most likely that this was essentially an attempt to deprive the Ukrainians of much needed munitions for their war effort. The Czechs have acted decisively, announcing they are expelling 18 Russian diplomats. A similar stance to the one Britain took following the 2018 attack in Salisbury.
These two men are now being linked to a separate incident four years earlier, leading to some suggestions of a lengthy covert campaign by Moscow and its GRU intelligence unit. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has reacted to developments by saying the UK stands in full support of our Czech allies who have exposed the lengths that the GRU will go to in their attempts to conduct dangerous and malign operations and highlights a disturbing pattern of behaviour following the attack in Salisbury. Russia has said these latest claims are unfounded, but the questions surrounding Moscow's conduct are not going away nor are those focused on what the West can effectively do in response. Mark McQuillan, ITV News. We know these two Russian spies from their infamous trip to Salisbury a few years ago. The government accused them of trying to assassinate a former Russian agent. They said they were sightseeing. Now they're wanted for a separate deadly attack on a Czech arms depot. In both cases, the spies used the same fake names. Both attacks led to the mass expulsion of Russian diplomats. Both responses seem to have made no difference at all to the Kremlin, which protests its innocence. All this as President Putin's most high-profile opponent, Alexei Navalny, is close to death in a Russian jail. Also tonight, life under the spewing volcano of St. Vincent in the Caribbean. We tour the worst hit part of the island with the Prime Minister. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's, um, you'd use the word earlier. Um, parts of it is like the apoc apocalypse. And Labour mocks scandal? What scandal? While the Tories wince, one grandee warns Boris Johnson could lose his red wall votes if the slick of sleaze grows, while a government minister begs to differ. The two Russian agents accused of the Salisbury Novichok poisonings in 2018 are now being hunted by the Czech Republic, which says it has clear evidence that they were linked to an explosion at an arms depot in the country four years earlier. Jane Deeth has this report. It's 2014. There have been several huge explosions at an ammunition depot deep in a Czech forest. Two workers were killed. Now, the Czech Republic says Russia was involved and it's pointing the finger at two familiar faces. These men, the Russian spies charged with the Salisbury poisonings in 2018, Alexander Mishkin and Anatoly Chepiga. The pair were caught on CCTV in Salisbury and accused of using the Soviet nerve agent Novichok to try to kill former Russian intelligence officer Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. They survived, but local woman Dawn Sturgis died after picking up a discarded perfume bottle with the poison on it. The men claimed they'd been in Salisbury to see the famous cathedral spire. Then they disappeared. Now Czech police are hunting them, saying the two were seen in the same region where the arms store was located at the time it blew up. The authorities say they travelled on fake passports, the same ones used four years later by the Salisbury suspects. Last night, the Czech prime minister revealed his suspicions. Based on clear evidence obtained during the investigation by our security services, I can say there is well-grounded suspicion about the involvement of officers of the Russian intelligence service GRU, Unit 29155, in the explosion of ammunition depot in the Vrbetica area in 2014. The Czechs have given 18 Russian diplomats their marching orders an echo of the wave of tit-for-tat expulsions after the Salisbury poisonings. Russia's foreign ministry said the allegations are absurd, but Britain said the Czechs have exposed the lengths Russian intelligence will go to. The theory is the Russian intelligence officers planted a device in a consignment of weapons which was meant to blow up when the arms were bound for Ukraine, which is still in conflict with Russia. But the device went off too early. When we had the Salisbury poisoning, there was this shock and horror that in a time of peace, Russia would carry out such operations. Now we can actually track that back and realize, in fact, this, this campaign, this covert campaign had been going on for years beforehand. And also that in some ways, the Russians don't have quite as many of these operatives in this unit 29155, which has been blamed for, for all these attacks, as, as we, we might have feared. So basically the same figures keep cropping up. Last year, there was an attempt, which the Kremlin denies ordering, to kill this Russian opposition leader with Novichok. Alexei Navalny was very lucky to survive. 
Now in jail on embezzlement charges, he's on hunger strike. His supporters say he will die without medical attention. Protesters recently erected this effigy of Vladimir Putin in Prague, calling him a naked killer. NATO today criticized a pattern of dangerous behavior by Moscow. EU foreign ministers will discuss the Czech's claims tomorrow. Jane Deeth with that report. Well, earlier I spoke to the former Czech diplomat and MEP Pieter Ryeshek. I began by asking him what he thought Russia was up to. Well, I think it's, it's very similar to what, what happened in, in South Korea. But particularly in this attack, it seems that they, they, they wanted to wage an action against the ammunition depot from where arms were transported to Syria and Ukraine, probably, and they wanted to prevent it or stop it. And in the process, they killed two Czech civilians. Um, so you could say this is an attack on NATO. What would you like NATO to do in response? Well, definitely, I think it is. Well, this revelation comes in a time when there is a huge military buildup of Russia at the Ukrainian border. Also, it was revealed how Russia hugely intervened in the U.S. elections and the U.S. took action. So I think the time has come up to, to update jointly strategy towards Russia. Your country expelled 18 Russian diplomats today in response to this attack. We, uh, and indeed so many other countries, expelled dozens of them after the Salisbury poisoning. It made absolutely no difference. So what difference is it going to make this time? It's true that effective instruments are in short supply how to influence behavior of Russia. And most of all, it's internal behavior because we can virtually see in front of us uh, opposition leader Navalny tying and, and we cannot do anything. Just one final and brief one. Um, this issue, this attack uh, on your soil will be discussed tomorrow at the European Union level. We know that the Nord Stream 2 pipeline project, which is you know, being backed above all by Germany, is almost complete. We also know that the last time the European Union sent its high representative to Moscow, Josep Borrell, he was humiliated by the Russian foreign minister. What hope is there for the European Union standing up to Moscow on this? The precondition is, is unity within the EU and within NATO. And then we can try to, to improve our instruments, our strategy tactics. But, but frankly, as I said before, we do not have many of them at the moment. Mm. And it's quite difficult to cope with uh, unpredictable Russia and also with growing influence of China. Peter Yeshek, thank you very much indeed.